Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I am Abe with MysticGenMara.com, a small town mystic from the middle of Idaho. And tonight, uh, I want to give us a little foreshadowing onto the upcoming full moon. This is going live on Tuesday the 23rd. Um, the full moon, actually the peak of it, is Thursday the 25th. But just from previous discussions that I've done on the full moon, the energy for this full moon actually starts on the 24th. There's a three-day window for the full moon. The date on the calendar is generally the apex, the peak, the highest aspect of it. But you can work with the energy on a three-day window, which is the day before the calendar date, the day of the calendar date, and the day after. So technically, you could start working on Wednesday, which would be tomorrow. <laughs> So, the first full moon of 2024 is the one that's coming up, and it is called the Wolf Moon. It used to be thought, back in the day, <laughs> that this was the best time to hear the wolves howling at the moon. The nights in January, if you've never experienced this, I highly recommend it. Bundle up. Big part of this <laughs> story, bundle up. But the nights in January are very quiet, unless you have a blizzard, different story. But <laughs> in general, when the sky is clear, there's no storm, and you walk outside on a full moon night, especially in January, and you're crunching in the snow and then you stop. The sound of silence at that point is so shocking because you hear nothing. And if you do hear anything, you can hear it from so much further. There's something about cold air that allows noise to carry further, I think. My, I'm not sure for, on that. You can <laughs> let me know in the comments. But it feels like it carries further. But when you are out on a full moon night, and we used to go sledding um, when I was younger, and we there's an old logging road. We'd go up to the top of it, hike up to the top, or have snowmobiles drag us up to the top, and then we'd use runner sleds to come back down. And... When you would get away from the fire, when you get away from the road or the trail, and you just go out into the woods or up into, out into one of the meadows that were around where we were at, and just stop, you could hear your breathing, but you could hear everything. But you heard nothing. It was, it was a weird feeling, but it was so crisp and silent. So if you have the opportunity, bundle up, get away from houses and outside light sources, and if the sky is clear, just watch the stars. It is absolutely amazing. There's nothing quite like that feeling of being out in the cold <laughs> in the winter, watching that clear sky. It's nice in the summer, but there's something different about it in the winter. And this is this energy of this wolf full moon that we're, we've, <laughs> we have coming up. So other names for this particular moon are the ice moon, very appropriate considering it's January and most of the time it's freezing. Um, the old moon, which is kind of a throwback to the ancient practices of like Yule and that kind of thing. Um, we also have the name snow moon, but snow moon tends to be more commonly associated with February, but it can float around a little bit. So they're all acceptable names. But the one that is most commonly used for January is the wolf moon. So the wolf moon, though, and this one I had kind of had to giggle at when I was researching this. I'm getting better with astrology. It's just going to take me forever because astrology is an entirely new branch of things that my brain doesn't quite accept. <laughs> and give me ceremonial mysticism, sigils, seals, all that. We're good. <laughs> What does trine mean? Uh. <laughs> so we're, we're working on this. Um, but the wolf moon is under the sign of Leo, the great lion. It just made me giggle when I was researching this because it's like wolf lion. But interestingly enough, these two work really well together. Uh, both pretty much apex predators for their environments, I guess is part of it. But this triggers a time of creative bursts of insight, creative influences. It's 
the energy can be very playful, which is interesting when you look at it. But wolves can be playful within their own kind. Not so much to everyone else, but within their own. Lions have a tendency to be more playful with their own kind, again, so there's that. Uh, it, this energy can bring in some fun life, fun into your life, fun in life in general. It also has a tendency to bring friendships closer, to deepen bonds between people. Um, the other thing with these is you get a little bit more attention to detail with this type of energy. So it's a good time to fine tune your vision boards if you have built those or revisit your New Year's resolutions, things like that. That's just a good time to tap in, check in. Is there something that needs to be adjusted, fixed, played with? This is a good time for that. Um, and if you're trying to decide if a good time to ask for help on a project or some advice on life in general, this is actually a really good time because the energy is shining very brightly for you. And because this energy, there's always a positive and a negative with most, thing, most things in life, because this energy is adding a lot of shine to you and to your life and to those around you, because this moon shines on everybody, it may allow the ego to get a little uh, puffed up and in the way. So just be aware that that could be something that comes up. In most situations, the ego will start to come up, the higher self will step in, things balance out. But you've got a lot of really good energy directing towards you, so there's that little bit of, well, I am better ego coming forward. So just be aware of that. The ego is necessary. We can't kill it. There are people who say you can. It's not possible. It just needs to re be reminded of its place. The ego is the front you put up to deal with life when it's too much. But when things settle down, you put the ego away. It's no longer necessary. So <laughs> it just, you have to remember the ego is just a tool. Uh, and the ego it may push you a little bit because everything's going so well to blatant competition. Competition's not bad, but unnecessary competition wastes your energy. And that's the kind of thing that the ego is going to be pushing for. So just be aware of that. This lunar influence is helping everybody shine. This is not a race. Not, a, not, a, not at this point in time. <laughs> there may be other times where racing is important, that you know competition to see who's best. Not This energy is just not set up for that. It's more for we're all kind of building and growing, so let's support each other. So, um... Lost my notes. There it is. Uh, there's also some chatter, and I wrote down the word. It didn't mean anything, so I had to look it up. And it's basically you have a really good conversation going on between the sun, the moon, and Jupiter. And this is allowing us to deepen or develop healthy self-worth, healthy self-images. And it shows us the path to our success and it's whatever project you're working on or what aspect of life you're working on right now this is where these three are coming together with the lunar energy to be like let's let's move you in the right direction the one big thing that I want to mention here is this particular chatter between these three planets Sun Moon and Jupiter are going to enhance support and grow the thing you are focused on make sure you're set up for success by focusing on your spiritual growth your physical growth and the positivity in life the ego self-pity things like that put them off to the side don't worry about them they're always going to be there trust me <laughs> but right now you really want to stay focused on the growth the positive the things that are going well because these three are going to enhance that massively you've got some power hitters so just <laughs> some things to just be aware of uh, I was digging around a little bit and I ran across this little tidbit of information and I thought this was interesting um, Mars and the wounded healer Chiron 
are not in a good mood together. They don't like, they're having an argument. <laughs> and this can lead to lashing out. And I was like, that's really weird. So I dug into it a little bit more. And it's people who are dealing with inner issues, dealing with big stresses in life, illnesses, financial, things that are kind of like the world's piling, dog piling on them. Um, this is a time, because these two are fighting, this is a time where that can be amplified because because Mars, Sun, and Jupiter are amplifying everything. <laughs> and then you have Mars and Chiron fighting with each other, so it's not a great time for some people. If you are dealing with things and you're going through some bigger situations, be aware that this could trigger some lashing out. Work through that. Try to try to neutralize that beforehand. Just because that person said made that flippant comment, doesn't mean you need to attack them. <laughs> and just because that person cut you off when you were driving to work, is it really necessary to try to you know attack your steering wheel? This is not the time for that. And this is more more of those heads up. Mars and Chiron are not being nice to each other right now. What I did find, though, is it's only going to be for like a two or three day window where these two are just kind of at each other because they're moving quickly enough. So just be aware of that during this full moon because that could be amplified. The other thing with these two powerful forces not being nice is if you're around someone who's going through stuff, this could be a very trial sometime for you. You're trying to stay positive. You're feeling great. You're not having that drama. But this other person is dealing with things. They're struggling at this time. This is a really good time to use your intuition to shine your compassion. Don't take anything personal. That's a big one that I ran across as I was digging into this. This is not the time for personal for taking something personal. Just let it go. It'll settle down afterwards. They'll, you guys can discuss it, solve the problem. But if you're going through some things try to get the help help get some help through this and if you're around someone who is don't take it personal it's not meant to be personal they're just dealing with a lot and having mars and chiron fighting because you have the wounded healer and mars very warlike at each other it's making things a little hiccupy so and yes that's a word <laughs> uh this full moon is about growth it's about enjoying life overall it's also about exposing things that are beneath the surface primarily for yourself but also some big picture things as well it's a good time to open your heart though to warmth to connecting with others doing that deeper inner work even if it's only sitting down and journaling for that evening really focus on allowing the stuff that's deep down inside to come out be open to your growth, stay focused on the uplifting and the positive, and be okay to let things go. <laughs> um, bigger picture, because that's more of just a personal uh, snapshot. When we look galactically, our solar system, um, Pluto has shifted into the sign of Aquarius. So this is big picture stuff. We're not talking every like you and me per stuff. We're talking worldwide there are some big shifts going on it could be shifts amongst people it could be shifts among cultures but we're moving into a time of a little bit of upheaval worldwide and as i was rooting around trying to find out more about that i ran across uh, uranus which is another one of the outer planets big picture energy here is shifting from retrograde going backwards to going direct this is a also uh, foreshadowing a period of huge changes in the world that we live in. Societal changes, political changes, economic, you name it. If it affects a big group of people, it's probably going to have some <laughs> adjustments going on. And this is why for you individually, that moon in Leo, the wolf moon in Leo is really about staying focused on the positive enjoying life yes things are going to be shifting the bigger outer planets when they make big changes it rocks things but if you are set up for success when you are set up for positivity when you are aligning with your higher self 
it allows those shifts and changes to be more of like the boat just rocking versus up capsizing it. <laughs> so things just to think about as we're going forward, like I said, I was kind of digging around a little bit, but the big takeaways from what's going on right now is the sun, the moon, and Jupiter are having great conversation. They're getting along really well, and they're going to amplify whatever it is you're working on, working towards, and building. So use that energy the right way. So we're going to take a little peek, and I'm just going to pull card or two, probably just one, for each of the elements. So we're going to start with our fire. I hit the right, there it is. Fire, guys. And this, it covers Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. I will be using the Gateway of Light activation deck um, because it's kind of a cool deck in the fact that it shows little gateways or energy fields that are opening up. So we'll get an idea of what kind of energy each of the elements are bringing in at this time. So let's see what fire, let's cut the deck again because it's not being too chatty yet. Let's see what fire has for this amazing wolf moon in the sign of Leo. What does our fire brethren need? What gate are they in? Here we go. You guys are in the Earth Star Activation. Earth is, or Fire is in the energy of anchoring, grounded action, and working with the Divine Feminine in Isis. So, Fire, this is a good time to connect into the planet, to Gaia herself. This energy is leading you and may make you feel a little bit lightheaded is what they're showing me. But with the Earth Star activation, this is activating your Earth Star, which is approximately six inches to a foot below your feet. It is your anchor point to Gaia. This allows you to understand and really tap into the heart of the planet. When you work with that kind of energy, you also become aware of the Divine Feminine. This lunar energy is guiding you to understand, no matter what your gender is, male or female, you have a deep connection to both masculine and feminine energy. This card is saying, this is a good time for you to explore the more feminine aspect of life, to look at how that divine feminine uh, shows up in your life, and how can you support both and find the balance. But working with the Earth Star activation energy is what our fire brethren are getting to here for this January full moon. Let's see what our Earth buddies have to say. And Earth is Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. What does the Gateway of Light Activation deck have to say for our Earth friends and family? Come on, there we go. <laughs> we have... Nope, we do not have... <laughs> I pulled three cards, so we're not pulling three cards, we're pulling one or two. So, we have the Holy Grail, Inner Discovery, Finding Sacredness. You are what you seek. Earth, this particular full moon and this uh, activation card is coming in to say, what is it you are wanting? You have the Holy Grail that's offering you the changes in the positive way of whatever it is you're searching for whether it's romance, whether it's a job, whether it's a promotion, starting your own business, the energy is really lined up for you as Earth under this Leo uh, wolf moon. This is a time to really pay attention to your intuition, your inner um, voice, and taking advice from others is what's coming forward as well. What is it you're trying to build? Focus on that thought and really tap into that energy and then see what information comes in. There, my guides are saying that this is a very, very powerfully positive time for Earth energy and the Holy Grail is there to help guide you forward and make the right decisions. So pay attention to your intuition very heavily for the next uh, three to four days. And let's see, we've got air is next the uh, Gemini Libra and Aquarius friends and 
when we're talking about air, we're talking about the intellect. We're talking about that growth and expansion period, but also a little bit of fun. It's the daydreamers. So let's see. We have the Anunnaki Light Codes. I have never pulled this card before. It is the energetic shift, new information, ending of a cycle. Air, this is really working with that Pluto energy where you're tapping into the Aquarius, where you're changing things from the past to the future. You're in a period of old things are letting go. For air, this is a time for you to release. Let go of the past. When you work with the Anunnaki, that is tapping into, if you follow the Sumerian um, myths and legends, you're tapping into the creators, those from who the heavens came, the people or the beings that helped develop us to our intellectual states. This ties into the air very powerfully. You are in a time of growth. You're in a time of casting away the old, of tapping deeper into knowledge and wisdom. The light codes that will be coming in during this time are going to amplify your natural abilities and help you expand because as you grow air, you are going to uplift and radiate to others and help them grow and understand their place. The information is going to be a little bit different, so people may not be as receptive as they might otherwise be for the for air, but you are getting some very powerful growth signs coming up for this uh, wolf moon. And it could be growth that is started at this point and leads into future stuff, but that's where we're at. Let's check in on water and then we'll wrap up this video real quick. And for our water, our emotional water friends, and I almost wanna say there's a sisterhood in the water right now. So there might be some sisters out there or a um, group of divinely aligned feminine energy that's watching here and we have the temple of truth throat chakra energy authenticity self-expression water tap in pay attention listen up <laughs> you are working with the deeper knowledges you're working with those deeper transformations you're working with Uranus and you're working with Pluto. So there's a lot of change because water's tapped into broader, vaster seas. And in the old um, language, sea actually meant people. So you're working with some big energy with Pluto and Uranus going along with this. Fire's not your thing, so be careful of your more hostile energies because the Temple of Truth is saying you are here to reveal. You are here to understand if water and air, especially right now, work together. So if you have high water or high air in your charts, this is calling to you big time. Things are changing. You see the truth of what's happening. Tap into that positive energy. Work with your guides. Work with the angels and move forward in a healthy way. The Temple of Truth has this waterfall, so it's a washing away. It's that cleaning of the old and stepping into the new. And that's the message that's coming forward for the water, Pis Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces, is to wash away the old, step into the new, work with those air neighbors of yours to really build things up. Fire and Earth are kind of anchoring and they're grounding, they're stabilizing, because that's what they need. But air and water, this is a time for you to shine, to help others growth and change and move through this kind of thick energy that's coming forward right now. So with that, I will let you guys and gals go. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and see if you can get out and take a peek at the full moon on um, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday night. If it's clear, bundle up. Don't go out there without a coat on. <laughs> and with that, I will let you guys go. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it. And comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts, uh, opinions, even constructive criticism. I'm open to all of that. Um, and we will see you in the next video.